This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number eight, Knowledge Graphs, part three. This is the second part of Sparkle query language and querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. And now we have a bit more complex queries to look at. And we are also querying a different knowledge base now. We are switching from DBpedia to Wikidata. And here what we want to do is we want to search for authors, their books, including publication date and filter the results for English labels only. And we want to filter for books only on global warning. So let's have a look how this works. Of course, as you see here already, the names of the properties and the names of the objects that we are addressing here are different. And this, of course, is more difficult to read since these identifiers here, these URIs are not self-speaking. They are simply, yeah, identifiers in the sense that they are kind of an ID. And of course, we are using different namespaces. First of all, WD is the abbreviation of the namespace for Wikidata entities. WDT is the namespace for Wikidata properties. So therefore, we are looking for the property WDTP31, which is instance of, so we have written it here, and also in our Sparkle query examples that you find behind the links, there you will find also as a commentary what exactly these P identifiers and these Q identifiers mean. And of course, we have then WDQ something, which is then the ID of a written work. I mean, the next one is also straightforward. There we have the property author and this there we by we connect the variable book with the variable author and here you see WDTP50 this corresponds to author and then we want to have the main subject to be global warning main subject would be the property P921 and then global warning is the entity WDQ7942 you have this look up of course in, DB, uh, in Wikidata, otherwise you are not able to do that. But the query interface, and you will see this also in the lab courses, will help you and will support you to find the according entities and property IDs because it can auto-suggest, so it helps you a little bit there. Next thing, we are looking for the publication date. This would be P577 as a property, and the variable we are looking for is date. And now again, all of these graph patterns are combined conjunctively, like in the case for DBpedia. And you see here, there is a complete new term, service term, service wiki base label. And then of course we have a service parameter and here the service parameter is the wiki base language. And we want to have only things here in the label, which has an English label. You could extend this statement by not only giving you en as a label but you can by comma then put several languages there so you could say for example english french german italian and so on so you can have here an entire list of languages however this service directive doesn't work for dbpedia it only works here for wikidata since it's a service directive for wikidata however this is quite nice because here now the label service is active and instead of the variable book, you can use here, as you see here in the select statement, you can um, use here then the book label as well as the author label. And you simply use then here author as your variable name as you also have it down here and you extend it by label written in camel case. So capital L and then able can also uh, in the same way here for book you use book label instead of book and then you see here directly the labels but this is also rather specific for Wikidata let's try this out so here you see behind the link the Wikidata query interface and you see here we have a color coding so all the variables are given in green then um, the wiki data entities and properties you see them here they are given in blue and the keywords the sparkle keywords they are given here in red so we have the select clause and within there we have then the service clause and the service is also 
um, a keyword and then here is it's a label service of wikibase and here we use as a service parameter the language and for the label we simply want to use only english labels and you see here uh, with a hash sign everything behind the hash is a commentary and we have here we are looking for an instance of which is p31 of a written work which is this q identifier so we have extended the queries with these commentaries that you get along more easy with exactly these queries okay let's try it out and you will see the result again will be a table of a few books and you see here the authors who has written here exactly books on global warning so el gore of course an inconvenient truth publication date here was january 2006 and you have a few more people here who have written about global warming okay so much for that let's go back now let's see a further example so you see here also in the presentation we have also a slide with the potential result however these results might change so they might not be identical since wikidata is changing so if now a new book is entered here on global warming then it might not be on the slide but it might be then in your query results okay now let's make our sparkle queries a bit more complex for that we can make use of the sparkle operators and with these kind of operators what you can do is you can combine filter clauses and filter constraints for example with the logical and and the logical or these of course hold for boolean data types you can use comparison operators like equivalent or not equivalent you can use um, greater or smaller than or greater or equal as well as smaller and equal for numeric data types as well as for date time for strings and for booleans the comparison operators equal and not equal you can use them for all of the other data types and then you have the possibility to use arithmetic operators so you can if you are dealing with a numeric data type you can use plus so addition you can use subtraction you can use multiplication or division in addition what you also can use for your filter constraints you can use regular expressions so for filtering strings so this is done with the keyword regex and then in parentheses you give the string and then you give the regex pattern and this can be extended by some flex like for example telling that um, yeah the pattern should be used in a case insensitive mode which means you don't care whether it's capital or lowercase and stuff like that and there are a few more keywords like for example same term is a nice operator that can be um, applied on two terms a and b and then it would simply be um, looked for equivalence of these two terms a and b and also lang matches there you can compare for two string expressions whether they are given in the same language so whether the string expression given in a and b are given in the same language this would be lang match and the result would be a boolean true if language of a and b are the same and false if they are different okay now let's try a bit out so we do filter constraints now and we want to look for book title which end with the word earth and they should be sorted by their publication date so to look for it so we will look for something variable book should be of the instance written work so that this is a book we are using here the property p31 instance of and we are looking here for so-called written works and the next thing we are looking for is the book label we know already how to do that and we want to filter that then later on and um, we are looking for the author and here we are looking also for the publication date and our book label should be filtered with a regular expression so it should match the word earth but it should end with that word and you remember regular expression if something should end then you're using the dollar sign here to indicate that this string should be at the end of your string here okay let's have a look at the corresponding sparkle query for wikidata using filter and regex 
like before you see here already that we are looking for things which are of type written work we are looking here for the author and we are looking for the publication date the book we are looking for the label and the label here now should be filtered so we have a filter expression and we say the language of the label here should be english since it should end with earth and of course we have a second regular expression and this second regular uh, a second filter expression and this is a regular expression so here after the keyword filter we use the keyword regex and then in parentheses first comes the string on which the regular expression is applied on and then here in double quotes comes the regular expression and that should be earth and the dollar sign meaning we are looking for string expressions with end which end with the word earth and we are using here the uh, next uh, filter that is i which toggles everything or which indicates that we are only we are not interested in case sensitive results so this result is case insensitive therefore the filter i which tells me i don't care whether earth is written in capital letters or in lowercase letters what else do i need yeah here also i need the author label and we do it again the classical way we are looking for the rdfs label which is the author label and we are filtering it here for the english label and in the end we order everything by date okay let's have a look at the sparkle query you see here exactly the same what we have and you see here also if i hover over let's say um, p31 you see that p31 is instance of or if i hover over that long number here and click on it sometimes it works and you see here this is written work so you see it's not so difficult to work in that user interface because when hovering over these um, expressions you can see here and get an explanation what exactly this identifier means okay so we have here the reg regular expression on the book label we are looking for labels that end on earth okay Let's start this query and see what's the result. And you see here we have 44 results and you see this starts here with a book by French author André Guide and the name is The Fruits of the Earth. And this has been published in 1897. Next comes from H.G. Wells, famous science fiction writer. He also wrote a very nice uh, and rather concise history of the earth. Um, the foot of the gods and how it came to earth next one bruce Ma bruce marshall i don't know that guy children of this earth and then we have perlis buck you probably have never heard of perlis buck but nobel laureate and uh, of course in literature and um, the one of the famous books is here the good earth and this has been published in 1931 okay so this was the application of a filter expression here again here you see first one is here the string then you're using the regular expression and then you're using some filter flags like i and again here is the result and you see here already the result has changed currently so previously when i did this there was already charles dickens on the first uh, place here the book that has uh, um, occurred earlier so we have here the 20th of december 1845 and uh, this was not present anymore in wikidata when we did it which might have several reasons you might find it out but the result might already have changed when you try out the query okay let's look for a more complicated query now we want to look for book titles again which end with the word earth and if available do also have an image and if they have an image we want to have the image displayed however we know if we do simply a conjunctive um, composition of that kind of graph pattern if it doesn't have an image then it would not occur in our answer so therefore what we want to have now we want to make this image optional which means give me the result no matter whether it has, has an image or not but if it has an image then i want to know the uri of that image and this is a kind of optional filtering so it's an optional selection of a graph pattern via the optional directive and this works usually in the way that 
you have here the triple that you want to filter. So you want to say that book has WDT P18, which means this has an image and you want to write this into the variable image and it should be optional. So therefore you are using the keyword optional. And of course, what is optional here has to be in these curly braces that you see here. Okay. And let's try it out how that works. Let's in the end, if we do exactly this kind of query here in the Wikidata query service interface, and then we see here, and you see, I do this here, um, visualized as a timeline, not as a table. And you see here that, for example, we have here the book of André Guide, The Fruits of the Earth. For this there, you have an image of the title page, which has published in 1897. Let's have a look a bit lower. So what else do we see here? Uh, is there even more? Doesn't work right out now. Oh, you have another one here, Charles Sheffield, the cyborg from Earth. This looks like Alexander the Great. I don't know this one. However, play around with it and you see the result. Um, what is also nice with this interface, what you can do, you can toggle here the kind of visualizations and you can switch back here to the original table. And then you see here the table and you see only here we have a resulting uh, column image, but only for those where an image is available, we have the URI given here. So it's only a few if you see them here. Okay, next step. So this would be the result with the timeline. Again here with another Charles Dicken novel, which was not available right now when I did exactly this kind of query together with you. Okay, another variant, we can look for alternative results. This will be done via the keyword union. Example here, which books mention London in their title, for example, or have London as their narrative location. So this means what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a book and the book label and filter it for London. And on the other hand, I look for narrative location, which is also a property in Wikidata, and the narrative location should be the entity London. Looks in the following way, if I do this as a Sparkle query. So you see here, besides filtering the book label for the term London, I have here the keyword union and the union, of course, which I want to here uh, disjunctively um, connect. I have to put these expressions here again in curly braces. And I have here the filter regex expression for London, as well as I have here then the filter for, of course, that this book has the narrative location London. And here I'm doing again this in the new way with the service directive Wikibase label and looking for the language English. And as you see here, then I'm looking for author label and book label without explicitly stating that here. I look, of course, for book label. I write it again, camel case. And by using this filter directive and here I, I, I can access via the name or the variable name, author label, book label, I can connect the RDFS labels, which are here given in English. This is kind of an abbreviation, which is quite nice. Okay, let's have a look at the results. Okay, here I have my, again, my query, as you see here, and I carry this out. It's running and now we have lots of books, as you see here, which don't have London in their title. So therefore I assume they are taking place or, you know, the narrative location there is London. Interesting, the three musketeers, at one point they should be in London. So I have to read it again to see that. Let's see whether we also have um, books which have London in the title. If you see one, just say it. We should have books with London in the title. There, London Bridge. I mean, it's also quite obvious that uh, books that have London in their title, the narrative location should be London, I guess. At least it's quite likely that exactly this is the case. 
Yeah, but there are not so many which have London in the title as you see here. Are there more? I mean, we can simply look for London here with the search interface. You see, we have seven. So now it's easier to switch here. Dawn out in Paris and London, London Bridge. We haven't found, we have found that. And the Great Fire of London and another one, London Calling or London Stani. And of course, lots of other books. Yeah, that's interesting then to play around with. And this is exactly the result we have been looking for. One more thing in this section of the lecture, we are looking for sparkle negation, which means we are looking for specific entities for which a specific information is not given. So for example, we might look for or ask for which books are written by authors that do not have an explicit occupation given. We know that there are authors, but probably they have another occupation or they don't have any occupation at all, besides being an author, of course. Which means, let's go back again. Sorry, this was too quick. So we are looking here again for books that are written works and who have an author. And we are, of course, again, as always, looking for the publication date. And this here, the occupation P106 should not be given. And for that, there is also a specific sparkle negation expression. And this is a filter constraint where I ask for filter not exist. And then I give a triple that should not exist or several triples that are conjunctively combined and should not con uh, exist for here um, a given entity. So here again, this is in curly braces. As you see here, I filter query results for existence. And this exactly would look for all, uh, books that are written by authors who don't have an occupation. In Sparkle, I have to mention this in Sparkle 1.1, there are several variants of negation. So I can ask either if filter not exist, I can use another keyword directive, which is minus, which works quite similar, or I simply ask for, you know, uh, triples which are not bound. So not bound, and then I give the triple here, and then I see exactly that this, uh, 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 so I ask then for, for occupations which are not bound. This would be another filter expression I could use, but simply look at this and then try out the others, look at the Sparkle reference, or we do this then in the lab course. This works in exactly the same way. Okay, we try this out again here in the Wikidata query service. And you see here, we are looking for more books. So not only English, we are looking also for German, Spanish or Italian. And which one ever is there will be used. So you see here, for example, there is one, this is given in Italian. Others, so the usual here are given in, in English. This is in Latin, but I guess this uh, imprimatur, this title of the Monaldi and Sorti work most likely is the same in several languages. Um, the point is here, of course, you see not only single authors. So you see here, for example, this is an author team, Fruttero and Lucentini, or exactly also Monaldi and Sordi. Uh, so these are teams of authors. And of course, together, they don't have a single occupation probably, and therefore there is no occupation given for that, which is also interesting that as an author, they give two and not two separate for that book. This is quite interesting how they have exactly encoded this here. No matter, you could see, oh, various authors. This is also an interesting author. Author is various authors. This is not necessarily, let's say, proper uh, structuring and proper modeling of exactly what you want to say here. If you have several varial authors, then it's not only one author, then it's various authors. Okay, but that's Wikidata. And Wikidata, of course, is uh, modeled and driven by the Wikimedia or Wikidata community. And of course, everything here is open for discussion and not necessarily reflects reality. Okay. But before I give such provocative statements, we have learned now about sparkle negation. And 
in the next section of the lecture, you will learn even a bit more complicated Sparkle queries. So see you again then in part three.